Hi everyone, this is Devlina welcoming you all to another exciting episode of Icons Behind Brand where we talk with the eminent figures of marketing industry and I'm happy to announce our guest for today Mr. Ishan Bose who is a chief marketing officer at Credit B with a decade of experience Ishan has handled field sales inside sales business development PR events at various stages at Credit B and he is also a TEDx speaker and has been invited as a keynote speaker guest lecturer panelist by many renowned forums and colleges in india so we are so excited to have you here ishan a warm welcome to icons behind brands so thank you devlina for the wonderful introduction and i'm really looking forward to this conversation yeah ishan i'm so excited to have this conversation ahead here and uh, ishan i have seen you like pretty active in social media linkedin and all uh, i'm curious to know about you and i'm sure uh, our viewers and listeners also in this young age you are a cmo okay which is rare so i would love to know about your journey and background first and then we will dwell into you know into the more uh, deeper questions so my journey honestly has been pretty much how any other indian kids journey would have been at my time Where I also wrote my engineering entrance exams after after taking science in my eleventh and twelfth, mm-hmm. and cleared all of them, and mm-hmm. then uh, eventually chose to do my computer engineering from Delhi College of Engineering. Spent good four years there. It was a good experience for me, but uh, what I also realized during that process is that engineering is not something that I really want to pursue a career in. Uh, mm-hmm. even though i am good at it i can definitely do good things over there but mm-hmm. when it comes to the intent of uh, doing or pursuing a particular career that is something i felt was not really what i wanted to do specifically on the engineering front so then after a year of corporate experience i pursued my mba i wrote mm-hmm. all the exams and i entered the uh, indian institute of management in dot in 2012 so spent two years uh, doing my pgtm over there after that i went cognizant as a social media consultant i was there for two years again one of those two years i spent at huawei which happened to be a client of uh, cognizant as a product and digital campaign manager that's where i met uh, madhu who happens to be the current founder and uh, ceo of the current organization where i where i'm working innovation tech is how we are registered great we being the platform so that's that's where i met madhu and we got along really well eventually you know we decided that we'll start something in the fintech domain you also get an opportunity to work and look into any functions and at the same time you gain confidence and knowledge towards that i think these are some blessings to work in a startup and i think you as a founding member i'm sure you must have gained a lot of experience over there so we are going to talk about that in the later part of the conversations as well so now ishan just help me understand i mean so far what are the changes and challenges been and you have seen in credit b and eventually you know we will uh, go ahead with the conversation how it takes changes definitely so there has been a business model change altogether which was the mm-hmm. first major change that i i experienced my journey so when we started we were a curricular and co-curricular needs as we have gone forward we started credit b which is more of a platform to uh, lend to professionals mm-hmm. mostly young but when we don't have a very we don't have any like major upper age limit where you know people beyond a certain age cannot borrow at all so focus is on lending professionals but because mm-hmm. most of them happen to be young so that's a young professional lending model as such so definitely the focus area has changed the way in which the consumers view us has changed because the consumer segment to whom we are targeting is very different earlier it was college students who are still dependent on their parents in india for financials whereas when it comes to professionals they are more independent they are earning for themselves whether they are salaried or self employed but they can Uh, independently take their own financial decisions so mm-hmm. the way in which they look at us and the way in which we approach them is different um in my personal role as i mentioned some time back has also changed so earlier it was more of a sales driven role uh, mm-hmm. where the idea was to manage the sales operations on the field and outside it uh, now it's a very centralized marketing setup which is a lot more sophisticated a lot more analytical and data driven approach uh, ishan you have just mentioned you have worked in the sales side also and then you know you have moved to the marketing side which are you know two different functions 
So how has the transition happened? I mean, you as a person, how uh, you took it and how it is happening? I mean, if you just uh, put something into that. It's an interesting question because many people uh, consider marketing and sales as exactly the same. But yeah. uh, there's a difference in both. So primarily, the approach in sales is you meet a consumer mm-hmm. or rather a customer. In sales, you deal with customers and you try to sell them whatever you've got. right yeah. so whatever is the product or service or whatever you are selling the idea is to just convince the customer that you know if if they have a need for uh, which is which the product or the service that they're selling is trying to fulfill mm-hmm. then this is something that they should purchase for a particular price mm-hmm. right now it can be done in different ways it could be done via telecalling or just meeting people and again there are there's b2b sales there's b2c sales so essentially sales is just make you know the end point of transaction where you are actually convincing the customer to make a transaction or make a purchase depending on what your proposition is right mm-hmm. so it's sales by itself is a very push oriented domain right and what i have primarily done in the first two years is largely field sales management right mm-hmm. so of course the idea was to identify in different colleges who would love to associate with us who would love to work with us and at the same time learn and pick up new skills that you know will help them in their future so i think that's how we work together with them and try to kind of you know help them out in their journey how you know technology is taking place in marketing uh, we are hearing about ai uh, you know machine learning vr metaverse so many things so how do you see the future of marketing technology perspective and how tech is going to impact marketing functions we talk little about that interesting point devlina because this is what a lot of marketers a lot of people in the industry keep talking about see there are a lot of buzzwords in the industry on in and around these uh, you know the martech martech in itself has uh, come up as a buzzword these days in, uh, mm. in many of the marketing conferences and seminars now the important question is what is martech eventually right so if we mm. have to fundamentally break it down right so essentially there are two parts to it the first part is the data part right which essentially means that whatever data you have about your existing or prospective consumer you try to bring all of that into a singular place now when i say data it's not just uh, the data that the consumer provides about themselves voluntarily on your platform it's also data about them which you can identify based on what they are telling you as well as what their behavior on your platform is right so for instance if there are 10 people who come to an app now all those kind of people might come from the same channel but each of them might have a different behavioral aspect on the app basis which the way in which you touch base with them or the way in which you approach them to keep them on your platform help them do the first transaction help them do repeat transactions on your platform has to be very different right but before we get there i think the overall overall approach towards martech first and foremost is to have as much data as you can about the consumers in a way in a format in a template which you can actually use to add more intelligence on top of it right now i think 80% of the companies if not 100% are stuck in the first phase itself when they don't have the data about the consumer which as i said not just about the data that they are giving about them still of course there is a db in which all that data gets stored and there's a crm where all the consumer facing teams have a certain view of that data so that part is of course there but i'm talking about data about them which did not directly come from them let's say what was their behavior even before they installed the app how many ads they view what kind of device they are using uh, whether they downloaded your app on 4g or on 5g or on wifi right small things the behavioral aspects on the app that i talked about you know even even the derivative data points basis how or the data that the user is giving about themselves how many more data points that you can derive out of the data that the user is giving so getting it all together in the same place having proper analytics having proper visualization around it is the major part of martech which i feel is where 80% of the companies are still not mature enough second part is the technology part which uh-huh. essentially tries to leverage the data that you have with you and tries to automate the scheduling of campaigns 
mm-hmm. automate targeting automate mm-hmm. even creatives and communication and let's say the overall copy of ad that is being targeted to the mm-hmm. respective cohorts and users right so so the idea of technology primarily is to leverage the data that you have and mm-hmm. build systems build automations build processes on top of it that intelligence or which would harness that intelligence that sits on top of let the marketing campaign run basis that that intelligence that you have fed into the system rather than um, individually uh, doing it manually in a, in a very or in a relatively more inefficient way right so even today when you talk about uac and aaa that's nothing but tech that is harnessing the data that sits in the back end right in this case it's campaign data which goes as postcards to the respective platforms and then uh, basis the entire data that these platforms have about the consumers they able to identify that which cohorts and which segments are most likely to convert or optimize for those campaign goals and basis that you know the entire automation system has been built so the the campaign efficiency has improved and the efforts to run that campaigns has reduced right so that has in fact doubly efficient or that has made the campaigns the um, or that has made the campaigns doubly efficient mm-hmm. right so so that's on the acquisition side same thing can happen on the crm side same thing can happen even on your overall funnel campaigns retention campaigns you know even your brand campaigns for that matter so the more intelligence you have on top of this data which sits with you you have to feed that intelligence into these tech tools into these tech platforms these uh, technological advances that have come and let that let that run the show for you while you just manage the overall ecosystem and infrastructure so i think that's how that's how martech has evolved and is going to evolve and everything else all the other buzzwords all the other you know fancy terms that we hear are nothing but the manifestations of the fundamentals which i just talked about and that's how i think we as marketers should look at martech simplistically which is to a get all the data together in one single place define it properly structure it properly store it properly visualize it properly and then once you have that data infrastructure in place then uh, whatever tech platforms and infrastructure exists in the market just choose the kind of tools and technologies and wrap it around this data so that it can make the most out of the, out of this data not just uh, okay i'll may, uh, mention this part again so that they can make the most out of this data the idea is to a have the data in the right place mm-hmm. the second part is to have those tech, tech the second part is to have the tech wrappers uh, whether it's the tools the technologies the platforms or any other infrastructure that uh, technology can provide Mm-hmm. to make sense out of this data that you're storing help you do the automations help you do the the entire efficiency management on top of this data which would let all your which would lead all your campaigns to kind of run the way you want them to with you just managing the show overall ishan moving into the customer mindset okay so let's talk about it how the customer mindset has changed in your industry over the 5 years i think multiple things have happened in the last 5 years when it and i talk about the consumer mindset and how it's changed so one major thing that that has really happened for all so one major thing that has happened for all the consumers and the marketers and everyone else in the ecosystem is covid which mm-hmm. has completely changed the way in which we look at the ecosystem or we look at things in general even in our day to day lives Mm-hmm. so as i mentioned some time back the nature of demand in lending has changed largely because of that is one of the things that we see of course it's still still coming back into track compared to how it used to be pre covid but definitely the way in which people look at personal finance and how risk averse people are when it comes to taking loans and doing things in general by taking loans has definitely changed post covid so that's one mindset that is very clear digital as i said has started to play a bigger role so uh, prior to covid people were still okay with doing things offline as long as it was convenient for them but with time and especially after covid there has been a tremendous acceleration in the way digital has taken over in multiple walks of life 
and even though there are offline options there are ways in which those propositions can be handled and met offline people and businesses both are now looking to do things in a more digital way not just because of as a trigger but also because it there are certain efficiencies that you can leverage when you bring technology into the picture uh, both from a demand and a supply side so i think uh, that's something that uh, everyone has realized and the entire ecosystem is moving towards it uh, one more thing that has happened in the industry is that there are a lot of unscrupulous lending apps that popped up in the last few years um which did not go by the book which did not follow the norms of a distribution platform where the app is listed mm-hmm. and that led to a bad mouthing of the industry overall the entire digital lending ecosystem came into the scanner and you know people also uh, had some trust issues on the entire digital lending ecosystem just because of a few apps that were not doing the right thing and that's where you know we as lenders we as a we as india's largest digital lending platform have made it a point that we be as transparent even in communicating the users about the ethical best practices that we are taking so it's not just about doing the right thing it's also educating the users that this is the right thing and this is how it's supposed to be so that you know they don't face any inconvenience from anybody in the digital lending ecosystem and i think that's another initiative that had to be taken by responsible digital lenders like credit bureau to ensure that people understand the difference between uh, an app that is doing the right thing and the apps that don't go by the book or are unscrupulous in nature so in this fast changing pace how fast the industry is growing you know in this particular industry uh, fintech and what drives the growth in this industry see growth has been tremendous i mean the growth has been compounding year on year and if we just go mathematically which say it's exponential and that's how it's going to be because with the advent of digital media i mean internet was still a luxury 10 years back now everyone has internet access on their phones social media digital media has evolved on top of this uh, democratization of internet and data everybody connected to one another on digital media on multiple digital platforms basis what's the reason of connect and the way in which people consume content the way in which people look at making decisions and the way in which they get those takeaways on the digital media is something that has increased now more than ever and that's something which which has led to marketers also changing the way in which they approach the consumers right so earlier when there was no internet maybe the way in which or the only way in which brands could reach out to consumers was either going atl where you know you just buy media at left right and center and there's no targeting there's no customization of outreach it's just one size fits all marketing which brands had to kind of go for the pace at which marketing has grown over the last 5 years is immense and i only feel that it's going to grow at an even faster pace over the next few years with all the disruptions and all the newer technologies be it blockchain or metaverse marketing or different other things that are coming in will only bring in more and more advancement for the good of marketers and consumers alike being a cmo right i mean it's it's it just look fascinating but at the same time i know i mean lot of responsibilities are there so what principles do you rely upon in the toughest moment as a cmo one of the important things that i have always believed and that belief has were imposed over a period of time into even bigger belief mm-hmm. is that always better to take decisions backed by data than just on gut yes mm-hmm. there are such uh, you have to act quickly and you have to go by uh, your first principles thinking or basic gut instinct but end of the day you still have to go back to the drawing board and retrospectively analyze that was it the best way to go about things or is there a better way in which things can be done? right so and it has all the answers you just need to look at the light you just need to look at the right metrics identify reporting mechanisms whether it's in form of those or dashboards or even simple excels keep a track of those metrics regularly and try to probably identify more metrics or more nuanced metrics in case there are problem statements that require you to go deeper then definitely with with all that data with with all that visibility of information which you can take more intelligent 
faults you can take the right decision sometimes it might not look right uh, to the naked eye because you know it's the data is not available in front of everyone all the time but then that's where if you are taking a decision from analysis get old data then i think you know it's it's eventually supposed to succeed so ishan uh, with that now we are moving to a little lighter section which is a rapid fire round so which will give you know help our listeners and viewers to understand you a little more closer tell us something which nobody knows about you right so one thing that nobody knows about me is that i introspect a lot when i'm by myself so how i can become a better version of myself describe yourself in one word i would say a warrior what motivates you to get out of the bed in the morning so the fact that i am alive i have an entire day to make a difference to myself and to the rest of the world around me texting or talking texting in the morning or in the night late in the night your biggest accom- accomplishment this year i would say since it's been 6 months so <laughs> i hope it's yet to come what is yeah. a one leadership lesson you learned on the go as a people leader one thing that i learned is that you need to connect with people at a personal level get the best out of them and vice versa what sort of leader would your team say that you are assertive objective and data driven one key learning that you have picked up from your team so one key learning that i have picked up from my team is that this perspective outside the work environment which will eventually help will derive perspective in the work environment and that essentially will help you better at work so there's a lot of perspective of the work that eventually adds to perspective in work is what i i've learned by interacting more and more with my one book or podcast you would like to recommend marketers so personally i don't follow any podcast any specific author very actively for marketing for me mm-hmm. my learning primarily comes from first hand experiential learning where i typically try to do things you know then kind of derive my learning from there but neil patel is a blog which i quite often refer to of mm-hmm. uh, yeah which we marketed so i think that's it so i'm learning a lot from people like you ishan so i'm glad that you got a uh, time from your busy schedule and spent with us or uh, with you know with all the insights and key learnings so thank you for being here thank you devina again for having me here and i also had a great time discussing different things with you and i'm sure learning is a process which is mutual and we all learn from each other i'm sure Definitely. that you know that's how that's how we all will so yeah thanks, i'm man. glad um, you know you came here and shared a lot of uh, insights over here so it was a great conversation all together thank you the pleasure is all mine